If we are right, this stock has only begun. The next big things uh, involve our five uh, disruptive innovation platforms, so DNA sequencing, robotics with collaborative robots, uh, energy storage, electric vehicles, think Tesla, uh, artificial intelligence. You can also think Tesla on that, but, but you can talk, think about every company when it comes to AI. And then finally, blockchain technology. So we've had a lot of news on, on all of them, including blockchain technology and Square's uh, positioning in that space. So we'll come back to Tesla in a minute, but first of all, talk about genomics. So genomics, we think, is the most underestimated and misunderstood of our disruptive innovation platforms. Uh, and the reason is uh, we have never uh, been able to really cure disease. Uh, now that we're able to isolate mutations uh, through DNA sequencing, think Illumina, that's the foundational stock in this space, uh, we are able to understand where the programming errors in our genome are. And uh, with CRISPR gene editing, increasingly we're, we're beginning to believe we're going to be able to correct those programming errors. I'm going to give you uh, a comparison today versus the tech and telecom bubble. If I had told you in the tech and telecom era that uh, there would be three foundational stocks in the CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing uh, space. Uh, they own the patents. Uh, uh, I would have told, and that they'd get a 10% royalty probably on any therapy derived from CRISPR-Cas9. They, given that we're talking about curing disease here, curing pediatric blindness, curing sickle cell anemia, beta thalassemia, leukemia, uh, they probably would have accumulated to 200 to 300 billion dollars in market cap. Today, the three stocks, Editas, Intellia, and CRISPR Therapeutics, can barely manage to get to five billion dollars hmm. cumulatively. This is so misunderstood, uh, and so we think it's, uh, again, uh, inefficiently priced. I have sort of a practical question here. I mean, if somebody says, okay, we're gonna have Facebook and we're gonna have everybody communicate with each other and be friends, I can sort of understand that. Mm -hmm. Do I need to be a biophysicist or something to understand this area? I mean, because that might be an interference with capital formation, actually, because I just don't understand it well enough to know whether to invest or not, or which one to invest in. It is a great question. Question. There is a lot of fear because of a lack of understanding, and it also seems so complicated. It does. So one of uh, at Arc Invest, what our, one of our missions and values is to educate, and I think uh, Simon Barnett, our genomics analyst, is going to start a program, a series called Simon Says or something <laughs> like that, uh, to actually break this down and help people understand it because it's so important. Actually, we think that two things are happening here. Uh, post the tech and telecom bust and the 0809 meltdown, there was an accelerated shift into benchmark right. investing, passive investing, benchmark sensitive investing to, to lower risk, the, the risk that the portfolio managers and analysts were taking. Uh, in the world we believe is evolving, uh, one of the most dangerous places to be in terms of the kinds of returns uh, possible out there is in the indexes because they are uh, being populated increasingly, we believe, by value traps. They're cheap for a reason. Mm. I mean, if you look at whether it's uh, banks, energy, auto companies are in massive trouble, massive trouble. Uh, pharmaceuticals, if they don't change the way they're doing things. Even rails, we think autonomous truck platoons are going to, to, to take the place of rails or, or be cheaper to transport, uh, transport, uh, to transport freight. So uh, anyone hewing to the benchmarks, which are very backwards looking, they're not about the future. They are about what has worked. Uh, we're all about what is going to work. There's a second component to this, and you raised it, time horizon. Uh, we're playing an arbitrage between, uh, we're arbitraging, you know, the, the short-term time horizon uh, that most investors and analysts have next year, maybe, quarter, sometimes, uh, compared to our five-year time horizon. And I can tell you with a straight face that if you give us five years, that ARK Invest is a deep value manager. We just published a report with our, again, long-term forecast, and um, uh, the numbers have gone up dramatically. And yet, and yet, uh, we think it's incredibly undervalued. 
Uh, and the reason for that, there, there, there are two assumptions that have changed with the, the, in the last couple of reports. One, our, our bull case for Tesla in our old model was that it would lose a third of its market share. It, has, it had in 2018, 17% global market share, including China. Uh, that it would lose as the Tesla killers came into the market, Audi uh, and uh, Porsche Taycan and, and Jaguar. Well, guess what? Its share increased last year to 18%. So you think Tesla can have 17 or 18% of the worldwide market when it's all electric vehicles? Is that what you're saying? And if we're right, if we are right, this stock has only begun. But that makes it sound, it makes you think that this isn't actually a vote for Tesla. It's a vote in all these other established car companies completely to failing mm. to make mm. the crucial transition, which they've known for several years they were going to have to make. Yeah, I mean, and, can we really be that pessimistic about the, the oh, likes no, 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 of BMW? No, they're or failing other? miserably, failing miserably. And in battery technology, they're not writing down the consumer electronics cost curve, which Tesla decided to run down, you know, and, and people made fun of them. Oh, you're putting cell phone batteries at, at the bottom of the car, cell phone batteries that blow up? No, they, they chose lithium ion pouch, uh, which is much more costly than uh, Tesla's consumer electronics batteries. So if they want to compete with Tesla, they'll have to sell every electric vehicle at a loss. At the same time, they're losing their internal combustion engine business. The reason this is going to happen is because within the next 18 months, two years, the price of an electric uh, vehicle, like for like categories, is going to drop below that for a gas powered vehicle for the first time. And it will continue to fall because we're riding down the battery cost curve decline. Uh, and, and so uh, the, the uh, traditional auto manufacturer, if you look at their R&D budgets, so you look at GM's, 10% of its R&D, $25 billion in, I'm sorry, uh, capital spending is uh, allocated to electric. They should be at almost 100 now, given what's about to happen. And I think the reason Berlin, Germany, uh, invited Tesla to build a factory 200 football fields, either soccer or, or, uh, or our football, that big, uh, is because they know they're in trouble. They've got to, they've got to adjust, and or else they're going to lose a tremendous number number of jobs. Don't you think but, it's a little early to count the traditional comp companies out of it? I mean, they haven't really almost gotten started. So the that is, is the problem. <laughs> that is the problem. Uh, they have just gotten started, and what they have delivered uh, are cars that don't even meet, uh, whether it's range or other metrics, um, the Model S. Uh, circa 2012. Now, of course, now there are three other, there are three other advantages Tesla has. So batteries, one. Uh, second is uh, they have their own artificial intelligence chip. And our analyst, James Wang, who, uh, who worked at NVIDIA, the artificial intelligence company right. for eight years, looked at the specs of this chip and said, oh my gosh, they're four years ahead of any other auto manufacturer in terms of the specs out there on chip technology. And that's important because we're going autonomous with electric. And uh, autonomous is an artificial intelligence project, right? right? Uh, the winner will have the most data and the highest quality data. Tesla has 14 billion miles of real world driving data today. Uh, and the closest competitor, Waymo, has yeah. 20 million. Yeah. So uh, there's, and then the last yeah. is Tesla is the only auto manufacturer still that delivers over the air software updates to modify performance.